In Season of Discovery Phase 2, there's a lot of different ways we can make gold, either with farming, window flips, or purchasing items on the auction house and reposting them. And today I'll share the different things that I'm currently doing. One of the first things I always do is to check the auction house for silk cloth. If we can get one of these for less than 2 silver, then you're also guaranteed a profit. This is because with first aid you can make heavy silk bandages, and each of these bandages requires 2 silk cloth, but they will also winter for 4 silver each. And what I like a lot about this gold making method is that you can start crafting, go FK, come back and have made a profit. The recipe Dragon Breath Chili allow you to craft an amazing consumable in phase 2. But it also requires you to bring a small flame sack, a material that can be a bit expensive. Selling for anywhere between 50 silver up to 1.5 gold each. The price for these materials all depends on what day you're planning to sell them. For example at raid reset day it's going to be a lot more expensive. One of the locations where I usually farm the small flame sack is in Swamp of Sorrows, where I kill these whelps. Not only is there a decent chance to get the small flame sack, but you can also skin these if you have leveled up your skinning. And what I also like a lot about this spot is that you can start doing it at around level 33 and do it all the way up to max level. So by the time you reach level 40, you have probably made yourself around 300 gold. If the spot in Swamp of Sorrows is crowded, then another option would be to head to Badlands. Here there will be way higher level whelps, but the good thing is that you can also get yourself a pet, and if you get any high level green or rare items, well, then you can also sell them for a high amount, simply because they're going to be useful for people at level 40. By the way, I know I'm not auto looting in the video, and the simple reason for this is just so you can see some of the loot you can also expect to get. Another zone where I also farm these is in wetlands, where there will be low level whelps. These also has a chance to drop another pet, and you can of course also obtain the small flame sack. The reason why I like this area a lot is because there's next to no downtime waiting for new respawns, and on top of this, you can also kill the enemies rather quickly. Two things that has also made me a decent amount of gold is the elemental air, and also the magic dust. Both of these things you can farm in Westfall by killing the dust devils, but sadly they also have a rather low drop chance. So if you're not already leveling in the zone, or if you're not level 40 with a mount, then I would much rather like to do something else for making gold. This could for example be to farm elemental air in a Raffi Highlands. At this location there will be a lot of different spawning enemies, so you don't have to travel for a far distance before you can kill yet another one. And you also get thundering charms you can sell on the auction house to any warrior who wishes to complete their quest for the whirlwind weapon. In phase 2, fishing still seems to be a decent way to make gold. For example in Eldrick Mountains, where you can get the raw greater sagefish. This consumable, or well, the fish you can turn into another consumable if you have leveled up your cooking. And some days you can honestly make quite a decent profit, simply just by purchasing the fish and turning it into the consumable. One thing that has also made me quite a decent amount of gold is the STV Arena event. This happens every 3 hours at 3, 6, 9 and 12 am and pm. And during the event you can collect yourself an arena master trinket. But when you loot the chest there's also a chance that you will get different consumables and even high level green or rare items. I believe the consumables is where I've also made the biggest profit. When I get the greater mana potions I usually sell these for around 50 silver to 1 gold each on the auction house. And sometimes you might be lucky enough to get 3 of these in a chest. When we combine this together with the Arena Master Trinket, and also a green item you might be lucky enough to obtain, then you're looking at more than 7 gold just by looting the chest. And you can use a layer swapping add-on to try to avoid as much competition as possible. You can also make a lot of gold simply by being in the main cities and just flipping items on the auction house. So where you purchase green, rare and even epic items above level 30. As of right now, many people are purchasing these items so they can either level up quicker, but also at level 40 to get better gear before they head into the new raid no more again. Especially green items has made me a high amount of gold, where we are talking about items with stamina and then either intellect, strength or agility, but also items with only one stat. This could be agility, nature damage, shadow damage, yeah even bonus healing. Some days I managed to find level 40 green items for anywhere between 5 to 10 gold and then I can resell these for either twice if not 3 times as much. By the time you reach level 40 then another great way to make gold is simply just to quest. At max level you will now get a lot more gold from completing quests, yeah even green quests that starts at around level 30. I feel like this is such a great way to make gold, there's just one downside, 
don't do yellow or orange quest as you might need these in phase 3 when you're gonna level up to level 50. There's a level 40 rare item that sells for a high amount of gold on the auction house right now, or well, at least on my server, and this item you can obtain in Tenaris by slaying the different pirates. When you slay these pirates, but also the dock workers, you have a chance of getting a chest, and in this chest you will be able to obtain the blue weapon. It is a low drop chance, but definitely a decent farm, also because you're getting a lot of cloth that you can easily sell on the auction house. Another thing we gotta remember is that these creatures is in between level 44 to 45, so if they drop any green or rare items, they will most likely also be level 39 or 40, and with the right stats, these can easily be selling for more than 50 gold each, if not a lot more. When you're farming in the open world, make sure to also pay attention to any solid chest. In these you can get many different items and even materials for professions. True silver bars right now sell for more than 3 gold each on my server. To know the different spawn locations of these chests, I use an add-on called Gatamate 2. This will mark the different spawn locations on my map, and now I can check each of them until I actually find a solid chest. And this will be for all the different zones. If you would like to know how to set up this add-on, make sure to check out my channel, where I also have an add-on video explaining everything to do. For those of you that would like to farm the elemental fire, make sure to hit the Arafi Highlands. Here there will be level 38 and 39 fire elementals, not only do they drop the burning charm for the warrior quest, no, you can also farm the elemental fire. When this material is selling for more than 50 silver each, then you can easily make in between 10 to 20 gold an hour. The spot that I talked about is in the western part of the Ruffy Highlands. When you're in this zone, you should also check out another location, where we are farming the rumbling exiles. There were 38 and 39 creatures once again, but now you have a chance of getting solid stones and also the elemental earth. These are usually selling for around 20 to 30 silver each, and the solid stone really depends on how many people are leveling up engineering or just using the grenades. If this spot is already taken, then another solution would be to head to the northwestern part of Badlands. Once again, elementals that drop solid stone and elemental earth. For those of you with skinning, a great way to make gold is just to slay different beasts and skin them. All the latter you can then either winter or post on your auction house. You will also be getting a lot of meat you can post and even grey items you can winter right away. I have a complete raw gold making guide and this you can find either on my channel or in the description. When the Darkmoon Fair event is live, I always make sure I have a bank character placed at these exotic winters, where you can either get yourself consumables or high level materials. The superior healing potions are purchased for 10 silver each and I resell them for anywhere between 40 to 60 silver each. For those of you still watching the video, in Booty Bay there is going to be a winter where you can purchase this build. The winter price is less than 2 gold and I managed to resell these for 5 to 10 times as much depending on the day. I hope you enjoyed this gold making guide and if you wish to see more Season of Discovery content in the future then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell.